Cypher here. I've got a question that may seem simple to answer, but it's actually a lot more complicated and interesting than it may initially seem. Sometimes just trying to answer a question is a lot more interesting than the answer itself. So, when does history begin? My initial reaction is just to say that it begins when writing begins. Seems good enough, and that's probably what most of you guys would think as well. After all, there's got to be some sort of difference between ancient history and prehistoric times. But there's actually a lot of contention implied in that. Does that mean that any culture prior to having writing is prehistoric, including uncontacted peoples today? Does that mean that as soon as people come in contact with other people who can write, that now they're in the fold of history? What about stories that are only committed to writing after living memory? So many stories that we have now are only recounted through oral tradition. Or even the fact that much of the ancient world is only filtered through centuries of transcription that necessarily changes primary sources. And in a whole lot of cases, only secondary sources get through that telephone game of history. Hello. 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 It's a crazy complex issue. History by its mere meaning has some sort of significance to anyone, but we don't necessarily give the same value to prehistoric times. As I often define it, history is the story of us, as in humanity. In fact, the word story is even derived from the same ancient Greek word as history. We can study our collective story in various ways, but if there's no story to tell, then there's no history. So saying something is prehistoric is also saying that there's no story to tell about those people. Now you get how contentious an issue this really is. Many try to argue that artifacts and oral tradition are enough to constitute history. But if we allow that, then we necessarily allow things like mythology to creep into our story. And since we can't differentiate without primary sources, then we don't know what's true in those kinds of cases. Since we expressly define myth as fiction, even if there's a granule of truth in there, then it cannot be history. So we run into a conundrum. Either you can accept myth as part of history, or you deny anyone who can't write a part in history. Both are bad options. This all seems too abstract, so let's look at a specific example. American Indians like the Iroquois often have rich oral traditions that give us their stories pre-contact. In the case of the Iroquois, they actually have a pretty prominent story about the formation of their federation. According to oral tradition, a man named Hiawatha united the tribes and made peace among the Iroquois centuries prior to European contact. Of course, the story itself wasn't written down until Europeans did so centuries later, but most historians believe Hiawatha existed in some manner. Unlike Ragnar Lothbrok, the Mycenaean attack on Troy, or the Shang dynasty in China, we don't have any other kind of evidence besides that oral tradition that tells us the story of Hiawatha. So does the formation of the Iroquois Confederacy count as history, myth, legend, or something else? In its most basic form, there's no magical or unbelievable parts. There is a bit of prophecy making with the whole thing around the Great Peacemaker, but that can safely be ignored just like the whole thing about the Ides of March around Julius Caesar. Remember, Dad, all glory is fleeting. So? Beware the Ides of March. No. In all, it seems credible, which is why a lot of historians believe some aspect of it, but it requires faith, not evidence. There's another piece of this contentious issue that Orthodox historians used to not have any problem differentiating between. They'd say Hiawatha is a legend, and that Iroquois history only begins with European contact. You see, since history is dependent on the recording process, you have to have invented writing in order to be part of history. But writing is also the last piece of what makes a civilization. So for Orthodox historians, history is the sole province of civilized societies. But for newer scholars, a lot of them will either avoid or completely deny this assumption, and for good reason. The old conception of civilization was that you had to have certain inventions and societal structures to be considered a civilization. That's why we'll often use words like indigenous or tribesmen to refer to people in the Americas prior to Columbus, save for maybe the Aztecs and the Mayans. 
in order to be considered a civilization in this conception, you had to have three things. Agriculture, bureaucracy, and cities. Writing is often considered to be a necessary part of that, but the Inca might have disproven it. So prehistoric times, by this definition, are for the uncivilized. Those cultures are termed as primitive or savage if they're intruded upon by civilization, or they're called barbarian if the intrusion is the other way around. It's a pretty simple way of explaining a really complex issue. But you probably already get what's amiss here. First of all, it's not particularly amicable to call people savages. Secondly, it's also kind of imprecise. There's a lot of gradation to that whole scale. For instance, the Inca didn't have writing, but they certainly had agriculture, cities, and bureaucracy. They even had a means of transmitting information beyond just word of mouth, but only really for accounting, rather than anything abstract like society itself. And there are all levels of gradation from there. For instance, many people who are termed barbarians in this conception had their own form of writing, such as Wait for it! The Mongols! So you can see, it's a pretty hazy definition. Of course, that's probably a better way of understanding the beginning of history, isn't it? It's hazy. To borrow an ancient phrase, it comes from the mists of time. We know plenty of stories going all the way back to Sumer in the 4th millennium BC. If a hard date had to be given, then that's it. But even there, few documents have survived the ravages of time. There's also unintelligible symbols going back even further, but we don't know how to read them. Time is the destroyer of all things, after all, especially our memory. Perhaps the First Empire, founded by Sargon of Akkad in the 24th century BC, Carl, stop Carl! Happy birthday! Not that one. With all that ancient Sumer stuff as the haze. It's weird, all of our ancient history is based on primary sources, at least until Herodotus. So the overarching narrative is missing from the story until him. Herodotus was the first historian. He also was called the Great Liar, even at the time. So historians have always been maligned, and rightly so. Then again, Thucydides was next, and he was an awesome historian. The Chinese would begin writing history around this time as well, but the Grand Historian would come a couple centuries later. So does that mean that the 5th century BC is the beginning of history? Or at least when the collective stories started being written down, which we can call the beginning of historiography. There's been this new movement called Big History that has tried to solve this prehistory problem by including natural history, as in paleontology, anthropology, evolutionary biology, and cosmology. But that's an inelegant solution, because it still lacks that human story. Which shows when they get to what we define as actual history, and they kind of fail to tell a story. Big history basically consists of lecturing about periodization without a narrative to make it a story. That's just redefining history and denying the basis of the entire profession. If you want a grandized narrative, go to Will and Ariel Durant's Story of Civilization. They actually tell a story, but that also means that we're back to that whole civilization problem. Ultimately, that means that there's no clear answer to this, as you'll find with a lot of these kinds of questions. History fades into legend the further back you dig, and as the movie says, When the legend becomes fact, print the legend. If you go with the written word as the beginning of history, then I suppose it's 3500 BC. But it's easier to see definitions as gradations rather than hard lines when you're looking at the past. Because history always has a way of defying easy explanation. A man named Hiawatha, 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 